Now, the contemporary hookup culture is at the centre of the new sexual revolution, a documentary out this week. It follows British and American students partying, getting together and then partying. Benjamin Nolo directed it and Shay Douglas is at the centre of it all. They're here now, but before we speak to them, let's see a clip. Culture of casual sex. There are all these messages about what it means to be a man and a liberated young woman with regard to sexuality. Today, guys rate you on how many girls you do. This man's on like count number four already, I think. To be accepted and to be well liked, do you need to be new? Do you need to push the line? I don't even know where we're going. I'm hoping that we get back safely. <laughs> do you want to see her take her top off? I go into this club, a hundred percent some guy's gonna try and take my clothes off. You win it to win, right? Come on, go, 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 go! Uh, Benjamin, I'll start with you. Where did the idea, where did the first kernel of thought for this come from? We had actually uh, just wrapped filming a documentary on global sex trafficking. And the image of men buying women and children for sex really haunted us. And we thought, what kind of society is producing so many men willing to buy a woman or child for sex? And so we kind of decided to aim our cameras at the culture and look at the larger sexual culture in the Western world. Um, and during the course of filming for a, a broader documentary on that subject is when we, we ran into the situation going on at spring break. And it was at that point that we decided, because of some different things that had happened, to really follow that story. And tell us, Shay, how, how you, you became involved. Yeah, so I was, I met Benji on the beach just while we were hanging out by the pool and he started interviewing us and um, from them, that point on he started to follow us on our journey during this hedonistic week long period and we were sort of so consumed in that party atmosphere and, and he um, just so gracefully uh, documented that journey and um, caught us on camera there. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, you look at it on the face of it, it could be seen as quite fun. How, what was it, did you enjoy it that week? At the time, it, yeah, and, and definitely by the video, it looked like it was kind of a crazy party week, but the more I reflect on that period now and I look back at it, I realise how um, desperate and lonely and sort of destructive that sort of mindset was and what I was going through, and I sort of still feel the effects of the trauma that I inflicted on myself with these behaviours, and I'm still trying to work through that, and um, although on the surface it may look like it's really enjoyable and fun, um, deep down on a heart-centred space, it's actually quite desolate and... Uh, lonely and, and a lot of deep pain really. Uh, this is short now, I want to get back, mm. get back to that, but when you're looking at it from that world, Benjamin, mm. do you, you see anyone really having a, a sort of real realisation or any awakenings or are they all, everyone, these people that you're meeting, are they all so into it and so into this whole stream, they're just following along a, a sort of well-trodden path? Well, I think that there, there's a difference in the experience for men and women at spring break and I think that, you know, Shay would attest to being in a mindset at the time that thought, you know, hooking up with lots of girls and, and this type of thing was, was really winning, was scoring, was, you know, um, achieving kind of this, this heightened sense of masculinity. And um, because those are the stories that are told in our culture about what it means to be a man, right? And so gaining approval through the use of, of women. And for women, they fit into it in a different way. I think women also go down there with an expectation to have fun, to kind of let their hair down. But what they run into is a situation where um, it's actually very, very unsafe for women in a lot of these environments. Um, Teen Vogue just came out with an article about all the girls that are, uh, all the women, young women that are sexually exploited at Coachella. And I thought, you know, it doesn't surprise me because every, every woman that we had talked to at spring break over the course of five years of filming, um, there wasn't a single one that hadn't been sexually violated during their time at spring break. And so I think when you, when you think about the experiences of men in that environment and the experiences of women there in that environment, they're totally different. This was encapsulated in a question that we asked to, um, to a, a young woman that we followed around Kimmy. We said, because we asked the guys, well, you know, um, what does it look like to have a fun time? And they said, you know, going out and, you know, partying, scoring chicks, etc. We asked these other young women, what does it look like to have fun going out? They started to kind of say, you know, going out, and then they kind of caught themselves and said, well, actually, just not getting drugged and not being um, writhed on by guys. And, you know, and I, I started, it just, it put me in a totally different mental space to understand how much different their experiences were than the guys. Um, 
I'm looking back to my own experience at university. I know a lot of this was going on, say, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. but one of the big differences I can think of is there wasn't social media in those days. Mm -hmm. A means things weren't caught on camera and you were able to get past. Nowadays, so much is documented. Mm -hmm. When you were thinking of your own experience, Shay, how yeah. much do you think it is seen through the prism of, of social media, but also mm -hmm. the, the sort of worrying about things are documented and there forever? Um, yeah, I think that social media, uh, pop culture, pornography all play an influence on our behaviours and the way we conduct ourselves in the world and it sort of forces men particularly into this uh, validation that they have to sleep with a lot of women to gain their manhood in a sense to prove themselves among their peers and that's the mindset that I was in back then and it was a, had played a huge role in my coming of age years where you're bombarded with all of these things and um, at the time I didn't really think too much of the documentary when they were uh, filming and everything so I just thought we'd invite them in to see what it was really like and what, what people are, are really doing in the world and um, it's proved to, to show and I've been on my own personal uh, transformation journey where I've been able to look at it from a critical lens and realise how yeah, lonely and, and sad that sort of world really is underneath all of those layers of this performance that we put on as men mostly for other men to prove our sense uh, to prove ourselves and gain validation against other men but I feel like if we actually just stopped for a moment and we had the conversation more openly and honestly with one another and we had the right language we'd probably all realize that we didn't want to behave like that if we knew what direction we were really headed in and I, the way that I look at it I was at the very beginning of this hookup culture um, which seems like fun it seems like you're having a good time but it's actually the same mindset that believes that we're entitled to women's body and that f eventually lead on to um, sexual exploitation sexual violence uh, rape culture and all of these horrific acts that, which are at the at tail end of it but it's that same mindset that believes we're entitled to women's body that sex is meaningless it has no value that we can you know do what we want with these women it's a fascinating and frightening topic. Um, Shay Douglas, Benjamin Nolo, thank you so much for coming and telling us about it. Uh, if you want to find out more, you can watch Liberated uh, on Netflix now. Still to come on London Live News.